My name is Andy Harris. I teach computer science uh, for the Indianapolis branch of Purdue University. And I'm fortunate enough that I have taught computing in many places in the world, including uh, Macedonia and China and a couple of places in China and in the United States. And now I'm having an opportunity to partner with my friends here at Kaiser University to help with their software engineering program here in Nicaragua. I've written a number of books on various computer science topics including HTML development, PHP, MySQL, building web pages, building video games. Uh, I've even written some books in the Dummy series. So if you've seen those yellow books, you know, you write enough of those books and they make the triangle guy look like you. Well, very good reasons. Uh, you would want to study these fields simply because there's great, there's great job opportunities. Uh, even in a place where we're not certain where technology is going, there's no doubt that there's a huge need for people with technical skills. These are great jobs, they tend to be well-paying and they have international reach. The thing is, you don't get paid a lot of money unless you can do difficult things. So what we want to do is we want to teach people how to do these very challenging skills that are going to give you lots more opportunities. That's what I'm excited about doing, is taking smart people and helping them get even smarter. You would think that a computer science student would spend most of their time at a computer, and that's actually not true. Most of our most important work happens long before the computer gets open. We really teach people how to think well. Um, I often tell them, look, if you can do your planning and you never get to code, I'll still give you a good grade. The truth is, if you plan that well, the code is easy. So we spend a lot of time dealing with problem solving. We spend a lot of time talking about mathematics, because that's the basic foundation. We spend a surprising amount of time talking about communicating, because honestly, if you are very talented at this, but you can't explain it to anyone, no one cares. So we spend a lot of time talking about relationships. We talk about business. Um, because once again, we want to make sure that you can solve problems for people. That's why they'll want to pay you. So we spend a lot of time talking about these softer skills as well as, of course, we're going to spend a lot of time writing computer programs. The languages don't matter. We can teach you several. Um, but the underlying skills go beyond languages. So we'll teach you how to think about data. We'll teach you how to think about operations, what are the various things we can do. We talk about various kinds of programming, like programming for the web and writing databases and data mining, how do we deal with large amounts of data. And yes, gaming, I love gaming, but it's hard. If you want to learn gaming, that's great, but we'll do a lot of math. Um, and we teach how to build apps. We teach how to build applications for various uh, types of operating systems in various languages. So we had computers that were able to beat people at chess and that was a big deal. But then um, a number of, of thinkers in the artificial intelligence world said, well this is true but chess is actually not the most difficult human game. We'll start to get nervous when a computer can beat an expert at Go, the Chinese game, which is much more complexity. Well, this week, we just saw a computer beat the sitting Go expert. And so that has all the things that happen whenever an artificial intelligence event. Oh my goodness, they're all gonna steal our job. I don't think I'd be nervous yet. But what this means is we are seeing some tremendous advances in artificial intelligence. And the reason to be afraid is if you're truly not willing to be a part of that wave. If you're not interested in understanding how this works, you're right, things could pass you. But if you're the person who's building these technologies, if you're the person who's learning how to actually manage these things, then I'm not sure there's such a need to be afraid. Maybe the future looks bright if you're a person who can build these more intelligent systems. The question is, what do we use these systems for? To make people a lot of money or to help people? And you can help make that decision by being the sort of person who can be developing these technologies. That's what I want to help do. There is hard fun, there's easy fun. 
But you know, my son is a basketball player. He loves basketball. And I watch him come home from practice. He's exhausted. He's sweaty. It doesn't look like he had fun. But he did. I said, you work so hard. He said, yes, but I'm doing something big. I don't mind getting sweaty. I don't mind that it hurts because I'm learning how to do something bigger, something more important. Well, to him, basketball is worth that hard work. It's hard, and it's fun, and it's work. And I'm saying that's what we're gonna see. Now, you probably won't get sweaty, although your brain will feel sweaty. But what we're about is hard, fun work. <laughs>